All right, we are back with Root Source and Leslie Ann Richardson, author of Bible Gems from Jerusalem, History and Theology in the Feasts of Israel. So another one of the feasts is uh, Shavuot. So tell us about what you wrote for Shavuot. Uh, at Shavuot, the Jewish people remember how Moses ascended Mount Sinai after he had led the children of Israel out of Egypt. And this was the culminating point when God gives them the law. And uh, what I've done with these particular chapters is I've really focused on um, one particular chapter, which is Moses' intercession for the children of Israel after the sin of the golden calf. Because I think we can learn so many things from those particular, um, that particular episode. Uh, we find it in Exodus chapters 32 to 34. And it's a very fascinating journey to follow Moses on this path of intercession with the Lord. What are the things, what are some things that touched you about that uh, journey of intercession? Uh, I guess it is a journey, a physical mm -hmm. journey mm -hmm. uh, of intercession for, by Moses. It sure is. Well, uh, I think that I had a number of um, aims in writing the chapter. And the first thing was that I wanted to um, awake Christians to the understanding that the God of the Hebrew Scriptures or the Old Testament is the same God of grace and mercy as the God we know from the New Testament. Uh, I'm the Lord, I change not. And um, I think that um, we see that after the sin of the gold calf, we see that Mo uh, God is presented as being angry and threatening to destroy the children of Israel to start again with Moses. And this is something a little bit perplexing it uh, makes us think that perhaps this is um, a God of anger that we're dealing with. But the whole purpose of this is to um, demonstrate what God's true nature is. So in a way, God appears in this light because he wants to cause the children of Israel to see the seriousness of their sin. But at the same time, he has raised up Moses as an intercessor to stand in the gap for the, for the people mm -hmm. um, because it's God's desire, God's love for the children of Israel. Uh, he wants them, but at the same time, he wants Moses to stand in the gap and declare his belief in God's mercy and God's love. And this is the way we come to understand the true nature of the Lord. Uh, he sets himself up as an adversary to Moses. And Moses has to have this tremendous courage in this intercession. He stakes everything on his belief that God is a God of mercy and love and grace. So are you, you, are you saying that the reason God mm. got angry, as it mm. were, mm. is because he believed that he had in Moses mm. someone who mm -hmm. would contend mm -hmm. against that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we're getting into very deep theological waters here, but I would say, yes, that God had prepared Moses for this role. Whenever he's preparing leaders, he wants leaders like Moses that are going to stand with their people, that are going to intercede with their people, uh, for their people that are going to... Um, they're with them so completely. And we see this as Christians. We see this in Jesus. We see that he is the one that is always interceding for us. And many times we're weak. Many times we fail. But the whole message of the Bible is God's mercy and that God responds to our cry. And if we cast ourselves on his mercy, he is never going to turn us away. And Moses somehow over the course of his life, had come to this understanding of God's essential nature. And we see in the course of his intercession, he, he's um, pleading with God. And he's saying, unless you go with us, you know, what does it all matter? You know, we need your presence with us. And he comes to the place in this intercession where he is just longing to see God's glory. He says, show me your glory. In this relationship He's 
developing this hunger to see God's true nature, which is his glory. And so God hides him, you know the story, hides him in the cleft of the rock and passes by him. And he proclaims uh, what his true nature is. And the rabbis call this the 13 attributes. Yes. And uh, they're very, very beautiful. And he said, they start, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands. This is our God. And this is what Moses is coming to mm. understand. God is revealing himself as he does in our journey with him. We each, that's how we all come to know God, in our prayer life, in our journey, in our casting ourselves on his mercy. And, wow, you know. wow. And I think, you know what, you go through the Bible, the whole message of the Bible is God's mercy. You know, when David established the temple, and he, he had the Levites there singing day and night, and what did they say? Praise the Lord of hosts for his mercy endures forever. <laughs> this is the whole message. So the God that we thought we knew, the God of the Old Testament, is not the God we thought. <laughs> yeah. So the complaint that I've heard so yes, often yeah. from people exactly. about the Old Testament, exactly. that I don't want to read it because that's not the God of today. Yeah. You're saying just the opposite. Yes. It, it, that is God. He yeah. changes not, to, to repeat what exactly. you said earlier. Uh, so can you read something out of this chapter for us? Absolutely. So this explains a little bit further. After God reveals these 13 attributes, speaks them to Moses, such a revelation. These are the immortal words Moses was given, which describe the 13 attributes of God. This shining array of virtues, this radiant galaxy describing the fundamental aspects of God's character, is the very centerpiece of his revelation to humankind. He is a God of truth and justice, but the divine mercy and grace, which are prominent in this enumeration, are the reflection of his overflowing heart of love and the true mantle of his glory. Here was given to the children of Israel an altogether new view of deity on earth. It's something so new, it's never been revealed to any other nation, a God who offered free forgiveness for trespass and law-breaking. The law had unveiled the mystery of sin and death, the terrible propensity of the human beings to transgress, together with the stern penalty which would accrue. Yet at the same time, it revealed the all-surpassing power of God's mercy and forgiveness, so that for Israel, and all who would enter a covenant of faith with him, the institution of sacrificial worship would make the way for restoration of relationship and blessing. Israel's sin had thus called forth God's redeeming mercy, despite the visible, terrifying splendor of the theophany on Mount Sinai. The true disclosure of God's character lay in this proclamation given at the same time the law was instituted, words which, filled with musical notes of grace and compassion, were a foreshadowing of the New Testament declaration that God is love. Well, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to share about this chapter? Uh, maybe one other point. Um, the chapter before this, I've called it Fire in the Heart, and I was inspired by some words of Rashi, the great medieval Jewish commentator, and he uses this phrase, Lehava Lev, and it means fire in the heart. And he traces um, Moses' journey with the children of Israel in terms of the image of fire, and he says it's the fire in the heart which brings transformation. And all the way through the story of the Exodus, we do have these tremendous images of fire, starting with the burning bush and culminating with Mount Sinai um, and the theophany there. 
So um, this particular passage draws on that understanding, lehava lev, the fire in the heart. And uh, I take up the story after Moses has descended from the mountain with a second set of tablets. And do you remember how the, the light is yes, bathing on his, face his and... countenance? This light bathing Moses' countenance was given to him as he came to share in the sacrificial love of God. Although the Lord had appeared initially as his adversary, the prophet had seen the apparent hardness of his heart melt into the rivers of overflowing grace he desired to display to the people. Through the rest of his long life's journey, Moses came to understand ever more clearly that God was a consuming fire, but that this fire was one of love, the flame in the heart, lehava lev, that burns but does not consume. The book of Deuteronomy recorded Moses' final discourses to his people, in which he taught that behind all the laws, edicts, and stern demands for holiness was a heart filled with grace and mercy. God's laws, Moses insisted, were the outcome of his love, and it was also love alone which enabled a person to keep those commandments. Love for God with all the heart, soul, and strength. Deuteronomy 6.5 Well, thank you for sharing. Uh, the book is Bible Gems from Jerusalem, and we're going to be back and have one more uh, session with Leslie Ann Richardson at a later time. But until then, we want to wish you the best and say shalom. Shalom, Felicia Ott.